Hello and welcome to another video tutorial for Game Institute's Design Your Own Game Council. My name is Joshua Hintz and in this video tutorial I will be taking you through the steps of assembling and soldering together your XGS Pico PCB. Now all these parts came with a lesson kit so we'll just kind of briefly go over them and uh, then we'll jump right into soldering together this. First we kind of have the soldering iron and now be careful because obviously uh, soldering irons are hot and now the tip of it is where it gets the hottest but also along anywhere along this barrel it will get kind of hot as you can kind of maybe see some of the burn marks that are put along so when you're handling this make sure that you handle it by grabbing kind of the plastic area of it. Next we have our XGS Pico PCB now this has a red solder mask that you can see normally you might have seen PCBs with a green solder mask, but this one has a red, just a different dye color. There's also a silk screen on this where you can see the letterings and uh, refer reference designators for part numbers, and we'll kind of be using that as we look at our schematic to uh, figure out the placement of parts as we go ahead and solder this. Also, you should have kind of a little bag of all the parts that are required for this. Uh, we'll be going through kind of each one. Uh, in a general fashion but uh, it's good to have on hand all your parts in a nice organized fashion and just for the liberty of this whole thing it, it's easier to print out your schematic and look at the reference designators little numbers next to each part when we go to actually populate this so uh, that's just kind of the general overview we'll be starting with the voltage regulator circuit kinda of like we did with our very first tutorial in our first experiment when soldering together this PCB and with that let's begin one quick thing that I'd like to cover before we get into actually building the PCB is some kind of safety procedures uh, obviously we spoke about how soldering iron gets hot uh, another thing that you might want to know about or, or be careful of is there's going to be some smoke coming off of this when you go to actually uh, put your solder onto the PCB and what a lot of people will do is they'll actually take a breath, you know, count to three, take a breath, go down, touch the soldering iron and the solder, which we see right here, uh, together. And as they touch them together, a little bit of smoke will kind of pillow out and you can hold your breath and then stop, take another breath, go back at it. What I also like to do is just kind of when it's soldering, just kind of blow, you know, away and the smoke just kind of disperse and you won't inhale it. So you definitely want to kind of keep away from inhaling it. Um, now what I have here is a static mat and there's there could be a number of burn marks in it but uh, um, one thing that you want to be careful of is obviously you don't want to touch down the soldering tip to the surface that you're working on uh, so you need to be careful of that. This will actually stay up by itself if you kind of plan it like that but you might want to take for example like a wooden block and place it on the on the end of it just so it has a little bit extra room obviously if you tip it over quickly grab it kind of always keep aware of where you have your soldering iron and uh, just be safe like that now as far as static electricity uh, we can also we can carry static electricity if we shock something it might damage a part of a circuit so if you have the luxury of having an anti-static mat you might have one of these wristbands that you can just kind of go and put on your wrist and it will keep it grounded now obviously that's a little overkill for some of the things that we might be doing but uh, it's always a good caution or, or a procedure to touch something metal and ground yourself before actually going in and uh, building up the circuit with sensitive parts. So just a couple of things to keep in mind and uh, we'll continue on from here. Okay, so we'll begin soldering our first components on the board. Uh, in this situation we're going to start off with the 5 volt regulator circuit so what I'd like you to do is if you printed this out go to your schematic and up in this top left hand corner is the 5 volt regulator circuit and at the top of this little square which is the 7805 you'll see the letters U3 now U3 is a reference designator that we'll use to actually find the location on the PCB where 
the 7805 goes. So scanning the board, we see that U3 is actually right here, and there's three pins, and on the on this side there's actually a heat sink. So in this situation, let me grab a final kind of prototype board that we did. We're going to actually take the 7805 and bend it down and put a, a screw and a nut to actually help sink the current or sink the heat that the 7805 is generating. Uh, and this is actually really needed because these things get pretty hot to actually the touch and the extra bolt and nut will help cool it down. So what you need to do is take your 7805 IC and there's actually a pin, there's a number one so that specifies pin one direction and just go ahead and insert it into this through holes right here and once you got it in I don't know probably uh, about halfway or a little bit more bend it down and see how it it fits into the hole because we have to drive a, a screw and a nut through there so that's kind of what it, it looks like and once you have that in there flip it over and try to hold the location in there and what we're going to do is we're actually going to use gravity to hold the part in while we bring our soldering iron and the solder over to make the first connection. So grab your soldering iron, we'll take it, and what you need to do is you need to basically just, you can tin, either put a little bit of solder on the end of your uh, soldering iron or you can just kind of hold it down and let it heat up and so what we're doing now is it's actually uh, going to be touched on the surface area of the kind of the silverish area and the pin and it's heating it up and then you bring down the solder and just let it flow and take it away and you want to have a nice shiny surface so in this lesson slides for um, lesson nine is a couple examples of good solder joints and actually cold solder joints and so the general idea is that if it's a shiny connection and you, you've got a good contact so it's going to hold it in, it's a good solder joint. So just continue on and solder the next three connections and we'll continue from there. Alright, so I've finished soldering these three connections and now we have these extra pins and these pins are kind of, they'll get in the way and we don't want to really have them there so we're going to actually need to cut them off with some wire cutters. So now this is kind of a little bit dangerous. Uh, when you snip one of these things, they're actually going to go flying, and they can actually fly across the room or fly into your eye. So I would suggest either wearing safety glasses, or what you can do is just carefully either cover cover the connection or kind of grab it. Now this is a little bit smaller, but I'm just going to kind of cover it and just snip the end of it like so and then just kind of continue down the line snipping them and removing them as you go. Now here's the finished 7805 with the nut and the bolt on the back side and the washer also. So this is going to be our heat sink and then I've also clipped off and finished and that's about kind of the length you want to kind of clip them off at so they don't short on any metal surfaces and that's about it. Okay, so with the 7805 done, we're going to move on to the power input. So we have our 9 volt male receptacle right here, and we also have a battery connection so we can make the XGS Pico Edition PCB portable. You can use a 9 volt battery. So with this barrel receptacle, it'll go in this top left hand corner. Again, the schematic is.